Please stand by. Ignition. Lift off. In the spring of 1955, the Air Force solicited design study proposals from selected contractors for an advanced space satellite program. Lockheed's proposal was considered the most satisfactory, and on 29 October 1956, a letter contract established Lockheed as prime weapon system contractor for Air Force satellite programs. The Agena space satellite evolved from this basic program. Rapid growth continued as work began on the Air Force satellite program. Following the Soviets' October 1957 launching of Sputnik 1, the Air Force satellite program was accelerated. In order to achieve earlier orbital capability, the Air Force, in January 1958, directed Lockheed to utilize the Thor IRBM as the satellite booster for the Agena program in place of the larger Atlas ICBM booster. From Air Force redirection to the first successful launch on 28 February 1959, only 301 working days elapsed. In less than 380 working days after the first successful orbital launch, the Lockheed Air Force team, working with Navy Surface Recovery Forces, retrieved history's first space capsule from orbit. Initial launchings achieved a 75% successful orbital rate. In 1961, the Air Force began development of a newer version of the Agena based on a modular concept. This vehicle, known as the Agena SS-01A, was more commonly referred to as the standard Agena. It provided great versatility for mission adaptation. The Agena SS-01A used improved system design, optimum structures, and solid-state avionics. In addition, the Bell engine was further developed and qualified for multi-start capability with either additional solid propellant start cans, up to five, or a liquid propellant start system, up to 15. Over the next six years following the initial Agena launch, the Agena flew 154 Air Force and NASA missions, including the first U.S. spacecraft to achieve circular orbit, first to achieve polar orbit, first to achieve three-axis stabilization and orbital maneuverability, and first in-space engine restart. For its contribution to the evolution of space exploration, an Agena was formally dedicated to the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in 1964. The Agena merits special significance. It is a classic example of response to a challenge that has tantalized man for centuries the challenge of adventure beyond the atmosphere. Since the first flight six years ago this month, Agena vehicles have traveled millions of space miles, logged thousands of space hours, and achieved unparalleled reliability and success. This performance has contributed to the vast store of knowledge accruing to the United States from our national space program. On March 16, 1966, Dave Scott and Neil Armstrong entered their spacecraft on Pad 19. At the same time, on Pad 14, the Atlas Agena was preparing for liftoff. The Gemini mission was largely based on a successful orbit of the target vehicle. The Agena count had no holes. Right on the nose at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, the Atlas launch vehicle ignited. The flight director then called for launch of Gemini 8. Five, four, three, two, one. Roger, 
understand. Visual, Gino, 76 miles. Boy, look at that. That's beautiful. See the dipole? Do I ever. I see everything on that color. Man, that's great. I bet those Lockheed guys are just jumping up and down. Yes, Tim, they Yeah. Gemini 8 had no difficulty in maneuvering in the vicinity of the Agena, and the first docking of two vehicles in space was successfully completed. Following Gemini 8, succeeding missions were flown by the following astronauts. Gemini 9, Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan. 10, John Young and Mike Collins. 11, Pete Conrad and Dick Gordon. And 12, Jim Lovell and Buzz Aldrin. These Gemini Agena missions conducted additional rendezvous and docking techniques, provided Agena maneuvering thrust for the Gemini spacecraft, and demonstrated the stability of two tethered spacecraft. From 1965 to 1970, 153 more Agena missions were flown. The peak launch rate was 41 in 1966. 11 launch pads were active that year. Three at Cape Kennedy, eight at Vandenberg. The shortest turnaround, time between launches from the same pad, was 11 days in April 1966 at Vandenberg. On four occasions, two Agenas were launched on the same day. Lockheed Agena Space Vehicle 1524 enters Building 104 for final HIVOS High Altitude Vacuum Orbital Simulator testing prior to movement to Vandenberg. Final vehicle system testing was conducted in the program test complex. Payload fairing sections, too large to move over the highways, along with nose cone and booster adapter, were loaded into a C-5 aircraft for transport to Vandenberg. The Air Force contractor team at Vandenberg offloaded the payload fairing sections and moved them to the base storage facility. Upon successful completion of final vehicle system testing, Agena 1524 was loaded into the transporter vehicle for over-the-road travel to Vandenberg, accompanied by an Air Force escort vehicle. Agena 1524 was hoisted up into the gantry for mating with the Martin Marietta Aerospace Titan III launch vehicle. After final systems testing, the Agena, the booster vehicle, and the payload are ready for final countdown. This last Agena launch of the over 350 previous Agena launches is the culmination of the most successful, most versatile space vehicle program in history. Five. Four, three, two, one, zero. Stand by. All stations stand by. Ignition, lift off. The history of Agena is a record of one of the greatest technical challenges of the century and is a tribute to the people who accepted the challenge. The United States Air Force, NASA, and the contractor team. <laughs>